George Fishbeck was a legendary pioneer in educational television and went on to a stellar career as a weatherman in Los Angeles. But it all started here in Albuquerque when Dr. George hosted a children's science program here on KME TV. We revisit the trip he made to our studio in July when he sat down with me to reminisce about those early days. I'm very honored to bring to this table a true legend of Albuquerque television, Dr. George Fishbeck. Back in 1959, you were asked by Kenemy TV5 program director, Dr. Wayne Bundy, to host a 30-minute science show, and as they say, the rest is history. Dr. George, welcome to Kenemy in New Mexico PBS. It's so good to see you. Welcome to our show. <laughs> good to see you. It's good to be here. Absolutely. Now, I have a question for you. I envy you your job. I remember sitting there welcoming other people to, to the show. <laughs> That's a, it's a great honor for me. It really, truly is. Yeah. You don't know where it's going to lead you. Thank you. Because doing what you're doing now, meeting people, yep. introducing people, that's a great background to have. I love it. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. You are a school teacher at heart, aren't you? I have never stopped. Yeah. Tell us about that. You taught at Monroe, you taught at a number of schools here for 23 years in New Mexico before your television career. Oh yeah. Talk about that. What was it like being a teacher for kids here in New Mexico? I come from a family of teachers. Every mother, aunt, cousin, everybody, they were all school teachers. It's better than working in the fields. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. But it, it's, it's a tough business. You have a lot of responsibility. And it's clear from reading your book, Dr. George, My Life and Weather, it's a wonderful book, by the way. I have to tell you that what the enthusiasm you brought to teaching and how you brought that enthusiasm to weather. weather. Come on, you. Come on. Come on, come on. Na, na, na. It came out, but no cloud. You know why? Now we can learn something. There's not enough water in there. So? I'm going to get more water in there. Can you get can you get rain out of a cloud that doesn't have any water? No, you cannot. Enthusiasm is a wonderful thing to have, and I just is bubbling over inside. I get excited about things. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's so much to get excited about. Yep. I can get excited about the weather. All I can do, I can look into a girl's eyes and tell whether or not. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My secret of life is opportunity. Ah. Write that down in your life. You will be given opportunities everywhere you go. And don't let them pass by. Yeah. Grab every opportunity you've got. You'll have an exciting time. It'll be varied, and that makes life more interesting. Mm -hmm. Grab every opportunity. You started a program with a legendary figure here at New Mexico PBS, Dr. Wayne Bundy. Who I stand at attention. When you hear that name, don't you? Yeah. Oh, boy. In 1959, hey. you started a seminal show. Talk about that show and, how, and what you were trying to do with that show. I start with Wayne Bundy. Mm -hmm. Everybody's life it has a starter. Someone who will give you a step up Dr. Wayne Bundy is the man who gave me my first step up into this. And I want to be the step up for many, buddy. Yeah. I don't know who they're all going to be, but I want to help them like I've been helped. Sure. And you're doing it yourself. I appreciate you, that. You have an opportunity to do it. Do you, do you want to watch a little bit of what you did in 1959 or in that era? Because we have a little piece Love of tape. Would you like to see Love this? To see we, have a wonderful, we have a wonderful tape of you during Who's a segment that? of that time. Let's watch <laughs> and take a look at Dr. George Fishback <laughs> doing his thing. Uh, this volcano was made very quickly, very easily, by using newspapers. Let me get my... Uh, uh, This is, <laughs> uh, when you fellas bring over the fire extinguisher and we'll show you how to really put this thing out. Sir? Oh, there it is down here. You know, we never do a program without, <coughs> without having a fire extinguisher on the set. And by golly, you can just blow the thing apart there. Now we just say, wow. That, that, is, that was a, a section out of fire prevention. <laughs> and the message that came out of that one was for kids, always close the match cover. 
<laughs> that, that's over and over. That's the lesson I drummed into him. And I'd walk down the streets and kids would say, remember, always close the match cover. I love it. <laughs> and that's it. good. That makes me feel good that they heard it, yeah. you know? Did that, would that happen often on a live show like that? Would things happen like that often? You'd have things out lighting on fire. You'd have to find a way to make it work. Was that part yes. and parcel of yes. it? Yes. How fun. It's got to be. If you make things exciting, uh -huh. then the people watch. Right. But the experiments didn't always work, did they? No, no. No. <laughs> Good Lord, no. Especially if you bring on animals. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a pet here. It's a kinkajou. You've never heard of a king of Jew? I want to see, see how pretty they are. Oh, he's crawling across my back. Oh, <laughs> you know what he's doing now? He is wetting from my collar right on down to my backbone. Very good. True story. True oh, story. I bet it is. What are, what are some of your other favorite memories from your time at KNME? Any other things come to mind? Everything yeah. in my life has been a has been a reflection of the good friends that I've had. Mm -hmm. Name, name whatever I've been doing, I can tell you the good friends I've had there. Yeah. Ron Misiker. He started out as one of my ninth grade students. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he, first thing he wanted to do, he wanted to be the one to bring out the, the equipment out of the, out of the laboratory to bring up the show to the people. He always wanted to be a helper. And yeah. boy, when he came out, he was always my helper everywhere I went. Wow. And he went on to a wonderful career at Disney. And you've had a number of protégés that have gone on. You've had a number of protégés and students that have gone on to do wonderful things. Yes. How does that make you feel? You've had that impact yeah. on, those, on those kids like that. You are one of my protégés. <laughs> I love it. I'll take that to heart. Absolutely. But, but, but truly, seriously, in, the, in your book, you mentioned there are scientists, there are teachers, there are television producers, there are any number of kids that went on to do wonderful things under your tutelage. It's, it's got to be very satisfying. Teach them on one on one. Yeah. You don't teach your classroom. Say, come over here and I'll show you how we do it. Come on over. This, you see that? Careful. It's a rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> no, and no. I have to say to your daughter, also in the book, a lot of these animals were at your home during those times. Oh, yes. We had every animal you can imagine. <laughs> uh, tarantulas to porcupines to skunks. Right. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah, yes, we did. never a dull moment. <laughs> Funny. Do you ever think when you were on the, on the farm in New Jersey, would ever turn into the life that you had? Could you have ever imagined it? I had a mother who was an educator, yeah. and my mother educated me to all these things. And I had a natural curiosity. I'd look up there, that's the Hindenburg flying over. Yeah, you actually had that experience. At, huh? at the, you actually had that experience. Your family was at the dinner table, mm -hmm. and you heard the explosion of the Hindenburg at the, yeah. at the naval station yes. some miles Rattled away. Rattled all the dishes on our supper table. Wow, that's really something. That's really something. I, I find that you mentioned the word opportunity. Let me go back to that for a quick second about opportunity. You had an opportunity to go to Channel 4, to KOB as well, but you refused to do it unless you could continue teaching and continue your work here at KNME, and they agreed to do it. I'd like to know how you managed three jobs at the same time, three very high-stress, high-profile jobs naturally. all at the same time. It came naturally. Really? Came and natural. being a good father at the same time. Thank you. More, <laughs> most importantly, thank you. That's right. Thank you. That's right. Oh, I get one back. <laughs> and your mom and your lovely wife Sue is here with us too, and she's nodding in agreement as well. That is the most important part. Do you ever feel like you worked during the golden era of educational television, like a time that's not going to come back? It, it, is that the best we, we had at the time, do you think? The best time is always the present time. Yeah. Today is, everything in the past was wonderful beautiful memories, but this is the day. Seize the day. There's your money. Right. Seize the day. Right. This is the day, my friend. Grasp it and hold it close to you. What a day we've got today. You and I and them and me. Yep. This is our day, not yesterday, uh -huh. not tomorrow. It's the day that counts, you and me. Even if it's raining? Huh? Even if it's <laughs> raining? Is it a good day? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey if it's raining, Learn to dance in the rain. Oh, there you go. I love that. I love I do. that. Yeah. I have danced in the rain many times. Do you remember the time about carrying the television out of the studio 
and uh, not just through the air, through all over New Mexico, but by physically visiting schools to Always. bring your program. Yeah. What opportunities? Yeah. Because I had a kinship already with every classroom. I could walk in, these are my, hello. Yeah. See? Yeah. And you were not a stranger. <laughs> and that's a good way to be. Right. Okay. It, 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 see, you've built so many. You've built so many relationships with so many people through television, using the power of television. And looking, I've noticed when I watch you, you would look directly in the camera, yeah. as if you were talking to one person out there instead of a whole classroom. Listen to the man. Isn't that it? He's got it. Do, yes. I, do I have that one wrong? on one? When you got a television set, a camera in front of you, mm -hmm. you don't talk to everybody out there. Talk to one on one. Talk to the one kid who's watching. And now you got a connection. And if the other kids are watching, they think I'm talking to them too. Right. <laughs> and they're getting it from that. But you got to talk one on one as your relationship with that camera. Why is public television important in our country? Oh, it's my opportunity to talk people one on one. It's my opportunity to talk kids and adults and everybody. And I reach each one. I don't reach everybody out there, I reach them one and one. Mm -hmm. And I do it, mm -hmm. and I feel it. I don't feel like I'm talking to a, 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 an audience out there, I'm talking to a person on the other. Okay, sit down now and listen to what I've got to say. Yeah. That's the way it is. Yeah. How important is public television, in your view, to the whole country? Teaching on television or, or advertising on television. Right. Well, why do they advertise? They want to get somebody's attention and get their money. That's why I teach. I want to get your attention and I want you to learn what I have to share with you. You don't want it? Fine. Turn it off. <laughs> but I'm giving it to you and it doesn't cost you a penny. <laughs> there you go. And that's, that's the, that, is, that is the importance of public television, isn't it? That it's accessible for everyone. Everyone can watch. Yes. Right? And it's always one on one. Mm -hmm. It's not one and everybody. I'm not talking to an assembly. I'm talking to the one person who's watching me. Yeah. And that's a good feeling. I bet. And now you can get the intimacy and that people feel the intimacy. They can feel it. Right. Dr. George, I have to say um, from yes. a personal basis. Yes, personal. You have, reading your book, you have made me so proud to be a member of PBS and to be a member of New Mexico PBS and KME. I'm sitting at this table with a true legend of public television. And I can't thank you enough. You've put into perspective what we do here every week. And you started it for us, Dr. George. You really did. You started it off this whole building, everything. You and Dr. Bundy, we wouldn't be here without you guys, honestly. Uh, all I was doing is somebody else gave me an opportunity. All I want to do is give somebody else an opportunity like I had. I want somebody else to have the opportunity. I had them. Right. And boy, when you get an opportunity, grab it. Yes. Never let an opportunity get away. Absolutely. The book is Dr. George, My Life in Weather. Doctor, it's from UNM Press, and you <laughs> wrote it with Randy Roach, and it's a wonderful read. It's a fabulous Albuquerque read. The section's about can My life fabulous. under the weather. That's right, your life <laughs> under the weather. And thank you very much, Nancy, for your help as well, for helping out with this. And we have to say thank you for your lovely bride, Sue, who's here as well, your wife. Of <laughs> what a thrill. Absolutely. Thank when you. When are you going to shave? <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. You're the best, Dr. George, I swear. Come back and see us. <laughs> Adios, muchachos. Adios, muchachos. Adios, muchachos. Oh. You're all good friends. You're all close to my heart. Adios, muchachos, muchachas. I love you. As always, all of us here at New Mexico in Focus appreciate your time and your effort to stay informed and engaged. Catch up with us anytime on social media by searching New Mexico in Focus. And you can find archived interviews and bonus material from our shows on our YouTube channel and at NewMexicoInFocus.org. We hope you're having a happy Thanksgiving weekend. I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.